All right, official introduction. Here we go. Hey, ladies, welcome to the No Bad Day Show, Simple Wellness for Women. I am Jolene Fisher, your host, and every episode of the No Bad Day Show will give you an insight into the life of another woman. She'll share her story, her triumphs, the struggles she's had along the way, and all the things that she's learned that goes along with that. Uh, my goal as your host is to bring you topics that you feel might be relevant to your life and encouraging because I want you to be inspired to be the hero of your own story. And this is why I introduce you to brave women who have done hard things in their life and continue to do hard things. And they're truly living out the meaning of the motto, no bad days. And so I want to welcome Terry O'Neill to the call today. She's a good friend who I met through a networking group. And we've continued to have a relationship to this day. Just she's such a bright light in, in my life. And well, and you'll see today how amazing she is. But I'm going to read her bio. So we have her a little bit of her background. And of course, she's going to go into that further. So Terry was born in Michigan and has lived in Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, and Minnesota. And finally here in Washington State, where she resides in Spokane, Washington. She has five children. And the most important accomplishment, she says, out of that is her amazing bonus of eight grandkids. And they are all her true love, pride, and joy. And since 1996, Terry has owned her own business with Malaluka Wellness Company, where she enjoys helping others live this healthy, really healthy as possible lifestyle uh, with nutritional supplements and cleaning products that are naturally derived. Terry is a Christian woman and enjoys teaching four to six hours, or sorry, four to six hours, and teaching four to six years about God at her church in addition to hosting a weekly Bible study in her home and with her friends from the church. Some of her hobbies include playing tennis as often or in the flower garden during the summer, listening to music, often contemporary Christian music or smooth jazz, plus learning more about healthy living and eating. And one of her favorite pastimes is meeting people for coffee, which is how I met you. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. yay. <laughs> All right, Terry, we so are thankful that you're here today to share your wisdom with everybody. So could you just kind of go through your background a little bit for us? We'll start from the beginning and how you grew up and some of those areas of your life that shaped you. Well, thank you, Jolene. Hi, everyone. Well, I was raised with two little brothers. And um, unfortunately, my father was an alcoholic his whole life. And um, when I was six years old, I remember very vividly when my father was actually beating up my mom and left the house in just a rage and spun out of the driveway. I mean, I could just see it, feel it. And, um, and I remember something kind of peculiar about that. Also, I had two little friends of mine. We were outside. And when we looked in the window and I saw what my dad was doing to my mom, I remember that I said, Oh, they're just plain. They're just plain. I, at even six years old, knew to cover up something that was really not okay. And I recognized that later in my life when I often tried to just smooth everything over when it wasn't always <laughs> the right thing to do and sometimes cover things up and not deal with them. Um, so I loved my dad. I put my dad on a pedestal probably because I didn't want to take him down and really look at, you know, the unfortunate addiction that he had that caused him to leave my mom, leave us, and not pay child support. I loved my dad. Um, he passed away, you know, a while ago, several years ago, but um, I've always loved my dad and I learned as I grew older to really feel more sorry for him than me because what a sad life, you know. And on the uh, other side of that, I, I really respect my mom even more so now than ever because she had to support three children. She actually worked three jobs at the same time. And, you know, you just that's just seemed normal. But when I look back, I think how in the world did she do that? And what dedication and what sacrifice that my mom made, you know, just, just for her kids. And I admired her work ethic and willing willingness to do whatever she had to for us, you know? Right. That's so huge. 
Mm-hmm. What, what age were you when your mom started having to do these three jobs and really kind of be the single mom and spread mm-hmm. with the family? Yeah, um, I was six years old. I was in the first grade. So I know she had to immediately start figuring out, you know, how to bring in some income. And your brothers, how old were they? Um, One brother was a year younger and another brother is five years younger. Oh my goodness. So there's a one-year-old. Yes. A five-year-old and a six-year-old. Just a baby. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. How how did that shape that period of your life really do you, if you could think about how that shaped you into the woman that you are today, how did that pivotal, pivotal moment in your life really shape who you are today? Well, there's a lot in between. Yeah, we're going to go into that. What's one thing you could, you could say though, or maybe a particular takeaway mm-hmm. from that, that you, you do kind of reflect on now and say, boy, this has made me into who I am today. Is there anything that you can recall or think about? Two parts. The first part is I, I later in my life kind of rebelled against everything and <clears throat> kind of followed my dad's footsteps, not with alcohol, but other things. And later on, I switched and followed more of my mom's, you know, example. And I think, you know how they say like, If an alcoholic has two sons, one ends up being an alcoholic and the other never touches the stuff because you, it it seems as though you kind of can go two different ways in your life. You can go down the path that's the pattern, that it's all you've known and you just keep repeating that pattern, which I did for a while, or you can finally, uh, or even originally just go, no, no matter what, I'm not going that way. I'm going the opposite way. So I think we all kind of have to come to our own terms in our own life and our own purpose and um, realize maybe what we're doing isn't working oh so well. And there's always another way that's better. So I think that's kind of, kind of what I eventually came to. It just took me a while. Yeah. Your mom had to have worked several jobs for a lot of years before you and your brothers were able to help out around the house in terms of financial Uh, right? I mean, did did you end up having to get a job early on or were you able to participate in extracurricular activities? Well, thankfully, my mom was able to meet a wonderful man who had four children of his own and I was in the fifth grade. So just like four years later, and he was very, he had a great job and my mom was able to stay at home and raise seven children, which was another from three jobs outside the home to seven jobs inside the home. But that really definitely helped and was a huge blessing to her. It was almost like her reward, never having to work another day in her life until the day she died just a couple of years ago. So. Wow. That's amazing. Oh. Yeah. So we're thankful for our stepdad. He was a wonderful man and really helped model what a dad should be. Good. Oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome. So you did grow up into the teenage years with somewhat of a normal life with seven <laughs> kids in the house. How old was the oldest? Well, they were all like two years older than me. Okay. So yeah, kind of stepping stones. Nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about your teenage years a little bit. You said you rebelled. Was it in your teenage years or was that a little bit older when you were in your 20s or was it for a long span of time? Let's talk about those years. Okay. Well, I kind of rebelled in the sixth grade. I think I was trying to figure out and I can recognize that in lots of children when a mom remarries, a dad remarries, it really kind of displaces the children going from one home to another. I still would go and see my dad on the weekends and I just really was struggling kind of with my self-esteem, I think, because I always thought my dad left me, not just that he left my mom, but so I rebelled for a while, uh, about a year, <clears throat> but I went to a Bible camp and re- remembered my roots that my mom had always raised me to love Jesus. And I got back to that. And back in my day <laughs> in high school, it was a uh, Jesus freaks back in the seventies. And so I would teach Bible studies and have, you know, I just carry my Bible to all my classes, but I, I also was covering up some things, not with my relationship with God, but not really facing some of the things I needed to deal with. 
So high school was fine. I went to a little baby Bible college, <laughs> um, got married, and it was a few years into my marriage that everything started to unravel. Okay. So yeah. talk to us about that. What was it? What what was it that you weren't dealing with early on that really caught up to you? Because I feel like a lot of women are in that space in their lives. And in fact, Allie, my daughter, even today, just called me from school, and she's she's like, "Mom, I don't feel like I've dealt with the death of my friend very well, and now it's all catching up to me, and I think I should come home." And I'm like, "Absolutely," because back when we were younger, and I know even I'm Gen X. Are you part of the baby boomer? Yes. Okay. So we were taught to just stuff those things and like, Mm -hmm. no, your feelings really don't matter. And we weren't given much help for our feelings (laughs) when tragedy would strike. It was just like, okay, well, well, time to let's just go. (laughs) Right. Uh, right. So it's just hard because those things are now catching up with us in our later years. And you, you found that with your first marriage. So talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, all I ever wanted to do was be a mommy, grow up and have kids. And I got to do that. I have three children. But what I recognized is that I felt my own self um, worth through a man. And since my first man was my daddy who abandoned me, really, then I put so much weight in my husband and he had his own business and he liked to hunt and fish. And, you know, I won't take all the blame, but um, I kind of felt like a single mom with three children because he'd work all the time and then go and do that. And I felt, um, not that I was, but I felt stuck. I felt like I was doing it all. And all of a sudden, I felt like I was being abandoned again, abandoned again. And because of that, it was just a self destructing spiral down, down, down. And because of me and poor choices and just my whole attitude at that point. Um, I was ready to just give up on a marriage, even though he was willing to do whatever it would take. It was, you know, I, I was stubborn and I had pride. And at that point, this wall around my heart had been so hard that I really didn't think anybody would really love me that much. I almost wanted to prove it. You know, I almost wanted to prove it. So unfortunately, you know, we did have a divorce and that same pattern, you know, I even remember. You know, when I drove away from my children one time to stay with their dad and it was, and my son was the same age as I was. And I remember that pattern. It's like, it just hit me, you know, wow, look what I'm doing. Exactly the pain that I had, had caused you know the pain to me now I caused to my children so and then it was 18 years you can ask me about that that I just I really walked away from God ultimately that's for me that's what happened if I don't have the right relationship with God how can you really have the right relationship with others and stay true to what your heart knows to do yeah wow in your marriage with your husband was God present in your marriage at all? Did you guys? Yeah, okay. yeah. He he was, but I I rebelled. I mm-hmm. I was so hurt. I think and didn't deal with a lot of that. Just like you were saying, Jolene. So you got to deal with it. It's gonna rear its head at some point, and it's hard to deal with. You have to you have to want to. And I guess I was too young and didn't want to. A lot of women struggle with the. <laughs> thought of wanting to divorce their husbands. And I would love for you, I know you're not the expert, but just if you could give yourself your own advice back then, as you are now, and what you know now, what would you tell Terry back then to do? Um, Yeah, I know that's a hard question, but what's some advice you would give her? It's actually an easy question in the sense of this, Jolene. Yes, I was going through a hard time. I just wish I would have had the perseverance and the persistence and um, no choice in the matter and made it work. Now, I'm not saying all marriages can work out. I mean, if your husband's beating you up or things like that, there is definitely grounds for a divorce. I don't deny that. But for me, when my husband was willing to work it out and I was not, I wish I would have just taken myself by my shoulders and said, stop 
think. Realize what you're doing. Just because you've been going backwards doesn't mean you have to keep going backwards. Turn around, you know, do a 180, repent, and make this work, not just for yourself and how you feel, but for your kids. And that was a big hurt. Uh, and, you know, it was still a really big hurt. I finally got over the condemnation from that, which took me a long time and actually caused me not to come back to do what was right just because I felt so guilty for that. And so that's not a good place to stay or be. Right. A lot of women live with shame from mm -hmm. past experiences and to break free from that and finally feel freedom. And it is the best place to be because we can finally walk forward into what God calls us to be when we aren't mired in shame, which is where yeah. the enemy wants us to be. Right. Yeah. So Wow. How about your kids, the three that were uh, that marriage? And you say you have five kids. So I'm curious, let's, let's uh, journey forward in the story or like talk about where the other two fit into this, because I'm curious. I'm, I don't know your story that well. So I'm, I'm yeah. curious where the other two are coming from. So um, I have wonderful children and no matter whatever happens or what choices we make, we, we have our children and it's always like, that's how God can make something, you know, that was bad, still be good. Cause I wouldn't trade. I wouldn't trade a minute of my life in that situation and thankful for them, for them. But I was still in my backward state and two years later, um, met another man, a nice man. And we had two children together, but had I dealt with all my problems? No. And so this, and what's kind of funny, Jolene, is I was married 11 years the first time and 11 years the second time in the same thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I'm not going to be embarrassed. Um, it just, I'm just going to be who I am. And that's what happened to me. Yeah. yeah. And so would I trade, would I ever give up those two children? Absolutely not, you know, and there's always good if you can find it and things can work out. It's just, there's a lot of hurt in between and a lot of things that happen on that journey, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I appreciate you being so vulnerable. That's, it's really yeah. hard to talk about the things that we have from our past that we felt shame around and to be on the other side of it now being so vulnerable and free to tell your story to a larger <laughs> audience is incredible really and it, it's got to feel good too in a way absolutely you're right so what happened after that is for 12 years i was single and it took me you know a few years of still just trying to figure out my way, started my business during that time. And um, someone gave me a book in 2006 and on page 192, <laughs> it said, what brings you alive? Like, what were you meant to do? And I'm telling you what, Jolene, it's the funniest thing, but that is what turned me around. I remembered my passion for God and how I had left him on the side you know I would still whenever I needed something or I was really sad or down it's it, we all run to God but I I knew I hadn't incorporated him a hundred percent and given my life back to him like I should and turned around <laughs> and followed him and that book um I won't go into all of it but it was definitely um the turning point oh, and I realized that I wanted I did not 18 years was way too long to be in such turmoil. And then I just immediately had this incredible joy, um, like true, deep joy, where no matter what was going on, I might not have always been happy. I always had this joy, almost like it was just bubbling up and it still does. And I know that, you know, it's it's from Jesus. It's For me, it's for, from Jesus. And it was slow, you know, I didn't like, change just like that but he gradually started taking the things away that I put so much weight in or just attitudes and thoughts and things and and then a really dear friend helped me really pray that I would not feel that condemnation because that's what kept me away for so long and once I really remembered that my sins are forgiven 
and God forgets them. And they're as far as the east is from the west, which means they never ever can meet. When I finally really, really got a hold of that, now it's like, okay, bring it on life. And then I never cared if I got married again because I was just happy. But I did meet Kevin O'Neill in 2011, and we were married a couple years later. And a year into our marriage, um, a wonderful Christian man, um, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with cancer. And before our fifth anniversary, he did die and go to heaven. And uh, I'm really grateful, actually, that God chose me to take care of Kevin and help him because anyone who's gone through cancer, it's, it is so hard. I mean, doctor's appointments all the time and hospital stays. And we had to live in Seattle for a while during a stem cell transplant. But I feel so honored that God would give me a chance to make it right um, with, with Kevin and have a great relationship with a wonderful man like he was. And by then, a lot of things had healed within me. And so it, I, I wouldn't trade that either. I miss him and I wish he was still here. And I know his five children and his brothers and sisters do too, but it won't be long till we're all there. <laughs> right. Oh, that's such a sad story, Terry, because I know you found your love of your life. And I remember being with you when, uh, or in Women's HeartLink Network together when he passed. And mm -hmm. I just can't, I, I always thought, well, how much joy she has in her life to continue and to have trust that is going to be okay. And you, you're such a brave person. I mm -hmm. truly admire that about you. And to walk through the life you've had really does take a lot of courage. And for a lot of years, you tried to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. And now you are not doing that anymore. So talk to us a little bit about the turning point. You said uh, you felt uh, bubbling up joy and you knew that it was time to turn back to the Lord. And what was it you said before you could face the things of your past. How have you gone back in your past and faced those things and really uh, kind of forgiven yourself and forgiven others or whatever you felt was necessary to redeem those situations? What, what is it that you did? Redeem is a great word. I love that word. It's to exchange. And um, I had to forgive myself most of all because I made stupid choices. Let's face it. Now everybody knows I made really stupid choices <laughs> and I did some very, you know, very serious consequences because of that. And it took me a long time to realize, you know what? None of us are good enough. You can seemingly have a perfect life, but none of us really are all that we're meant to be. I believe unless you allow God to, um, mold you into the best, you know, the best of yourself that you can be. But I did forgive myself. I had to forgive even both my husbands. Um, even though they really didn't do much wrong, I just allowed to feel like I was abandoned or not loved like I needed to be and all of that. And then to just realize that, you know what, my life is not over. I could start fresh and new. And I didn't have to wallow in the past. I could be excited about a vibrant, new, fresh future. And that took some time. And having good friends, um, especially my Christian friends that would help me in my, my journey and mentors that just helped me through all that. It's, it's been a process, but again, I wouldn't change a day because here I am today. And it all is like this puzzle. There are dark pieces in beautiful floral arrangements of a puzzle or whatever. And they all have to contrast and the light's not so great if it wasn't so dark, I guess. <laughs> I love it. Now you had to start your own business or you did start your own business. I wouldn't <laughs> say have to, but you chose the route of being more of an entrepreneur and, and being able to stay at home and work from home. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your Malaluka business and what brought that on. Well, I think at that point, I really always had wanted to be at home with my children. Um, sad to think about a lot of my years where my mom wasn't around much. 
So that was something I always had a deep desire is to, to be able to be at home with my kids. And when I realized that we needed some extra money, this was right before my second divorce, um, I thought, wow, this would be great to have my own business from home. I had tried other things and they didn't work, but this one really resonated with me, wellness and all of that. And just the business model that I could really do it from home. And um, I had a passion for health and wellness and helping my family be healthy first and foremost. And then I figured I wanted to pass that on. Passion is pass I on passion. And so in 1996, yeah, I started my business and it took a while to get it up and going. I had a six month old, a two year old, and my other three were in school, but I loved being able to have my first love being a mom. And my second was to be, uh, have my own business, be an entrepreneur. I never wanted to work for someone else. I didn't want someone to tell me when to work, what I was worth, and how to figure out a vacation a year in advance. It's like, well, maybe on April 13th, I want to take a vacation. Why do I have to wait when I told you on August 15th or whatever? And so I really love the challenge of that and meeting new people and just sharing good things with them. Okay. It's been a great journey. Yeah. So you started that uh, right, right before your second divorce, you said, or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that was just what helped kind of bridge your financial gap, right? For between that and living on your own again. How do yeah. you have been so scary though? Yes, it was a little scary, but I'm so grateful for that business. I actually had started it five years before I was divorced. So I had it very well established and it's residual income. So I had several months that I took off when I went through that, you know, divorce and the ripping and tearing and all the heartache that comes with that. And my residual income just stayed the same for all those months. And then um, I just picked it up when I was finally ready to get back at it. And it's and then when I married Kevin, you know, he had a great retirement and all, but I kept my business and little did I know that, you know, within five years he would pass away. And now I'm on my own again. It's been, it'll be two years. It'll be two years in April that Kevin passed away, but God's grace has been almost close enough to touch. Almost. <laughs> oh, I love that. And you have your eight grandchildren. Are they in town or are they all over the place? Six of my eight grandkids are here in Spokane and oh. three of my five children are here in Spokane. So I, I love to be the most available grandma. Almost every day I have something that I have specifically scheduled with grandkids. Um, so it's every Tuesday and every Wednesday and every Thursday and Friday. So I make a point besides everything in between. And that's my favorite thing is to, that's why I love having my own business. I don't have to ask a boss if I can keep a child who's sick or, or whatever. So that's been also talking about redeem. I feel like God's allowing me and all of you that might be grandparents out there. Um, we get to redeem maybe where, when we're young parents, like I remember so much in my twenties, with my first three, especially I was always in a hurry. It's like, hurry up, get in the car, hurry up and eat your breakfast, hurry up and get dressed. It's like, hurry, hurry, hurry. And you know, Oh mommy, look at this flower. And you go hurry. And then now I think, why was I in such a hurry? And those, you know what they say, the days last forever and the years go by like that. But, um, now with my grandkids redeeming the time, I get to stop. Oh, I love that little flower. Yes, look at that bug. And I don't want to be in a hurry when I'm with them. And it's almost like God gives us a second chance because if we kind of blew it while we were young parents, we now can just enjoy the wonder of children and just the miracle that they are. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I hear a lot of grandparents say that their pride and joy is their grandkids and that you have all the love with very little responsibility because you can give them back at the end of the day. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, very true. Oh, that's so mm -hmm. neat. That probably keeps you busy though, at least with what you're doing now and working and helping you with the grandkids and what a blessing that is for your own children who probably lead pretty busy lives and work right. and love that help. So. Yeah. You. So tell yeah. us about your business a little bit more, Malaluka Company. Well, thank you. Well, I always just love the philosophy of wellness. And I 
immediately recognized that Melaleuca manufactures products that just replaced what I was already buying at the store. Melaleuca's brand just cost less and worked better and were naturally derived. And that was an easy decision to just buy online and have it come to my door. Something kind of funny. Since I started in 1996, I remember when my friend said, yeah, all the products are green. And I go, oh, that's cool. Green packaging. She goes, no, they're, I go, oh, green. That's a new term. I just thought that was a color. That's kind of old school. And then also when she said, yeah, your vitamins, your laundry soap, your skincare, everything's going to just be delivered to your door. And I go, my laundry soap's going to come to my door? Huh, okay, well, whatever. And now look at Amazon. They practically bring a cup of coffee brewed to your door, right? <laughs> Pretty soon the drones are going to come with, you know, your latte or something. But um, yeah, so the idea of just switching stores, and I'd done a lot of research then about chemicals in our home and how so many people use bleach, ammonia, poisons, toxins, and why wouldn't they at least like the choice of an alternative that's naturally derived and you know, sad that so many people have allergies, asthma, eczema, autoimmune issues. And a lot is because our bodies are literally sick and tired, literally sick and tired of trying to filter out that. So why not try to have safer, you know, laundry products so you're not breathing it in or absorbing it through your skin and, you know, all of that. So I really just love the philosophy and wanted to share it with everyone I could. And I mostly just introduce others to be a wholesale member like I am and they buy like I do. And those who want to pursue a business, then I love to team up and partner up and work together. So yeah, it's been great. I'm just so thankful for it. I, I remembered residual income when I was a single mom, I did have to work and okay, now I'm really dating myself. This whole thing is dating myself. Um, <laughs> But um, when I lived in Seattle, I had to sell a hundred pagers. That's before cell phones. I know some people are going a pager. What is that? But <laughs> it's when someone could dial a pager and their phone number would show up on your little, little whatever that's called, a pager, and then you would know to um, to call that number. And anyhow, I had to sell a hundred a month. <sighs> and it paid once, and the next month. <laughs> I'd have to start all over again. And then one of my friends there said, gee, too bad we don't get paid residual income from the 100 customers we all get each month. The company gets, keeps getting paid on their service, but we don't. And I said, hmm, residual income. I'm going to make sure the next thing I do offers where you do a job once and you keep getting paid. So um, God worked it out that someone asked me if I'd like to take a look. I wasn't even really looking and the rest is history. It'll be 24 years next month that I have been pursuing my business and helping others be as healthy as possible. Well, that's incredible. I met you around the same time my my uh, house cleaner was using okay. Maluka products herself. And then she asked me to start buying them for the household. And so I met you and I was like, oh, yeah, well, there's that connection. And so <laughs> I've been using them ever since, like probably for the last four years, I would say. And it definitely makes you feel a lot better knowing you're using natural products to that are turning into, you know, into your home. Like the air you breathe is not toxic, right? Because mm -hmm. didn't Malaluka do a study or there was a study done on lung cancer and the toxicity of our home? What did they? Yes, there was a study independent of Melaleuca in Europe. Actually, they tested 6,000 people, probably women who clean their homes once a week. Not that men don't clean the homes, but usually. And 20 years later, the damage to their lungs of, of, of those 6,000 women were um, the same as someone who smoked a pack of cigarettes a day. So that was a 20-year study. And then Melaleuca just adopted that study or, you know, we just incorporated it in our information because um, it's so important, let alone the environment. You know, all that stuff that's bad for us, it's going down the drain and we all need to be a lot more conscientious of what we're using and what we're pouring down and using less packaging and recycling and all of that. I mean, this, our earth, we need to take care of it. So yes, that's an extra blessing and benefit. Yes, we absolutely do <laughs> need to take care of our earth. And I really love the products. Gosh, I, um, I was afraid at first, like there's this oh, am I going to be able to buy enough to keep up with the monthly thing? And oh my gosh, that's not a bad heart at all. I love your guys's gum. 
I choose, oh. uh, our whole family loves the gum. So I'm constantly ordering that. I love the toothpaste. We order that all the time. And uh, just the products for cleaning the home and the laundry soap. Jeez, even like talking about dryer sheets, what people use mm -hmm. in everyday, you know, dryer sheets you buy at the grocery store, how, how horribly toxic those are for our bodies because it goes on our clothes and then sits on our skin and our skin being the largest organ of our body that absorbs those toxins. And then, mm -hmm. you know, so knowing that I'm not using stuff like that makes me feel so much better for my whole family. Yeah. Well, thank you for being a customer and I'm glad you love the products, Jolene. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Terry, we uh, are almost out of time here. I want to ask you though, if there's anything else that has come to your mind before we get off the call, if there's anything that you're like wanting to share that you thought of as we've been talking and that uh, we haven't gotten the chance to talk about yet. Yeah. Well, maybe just to sum it all up, if there is anyone watching who might be in the same boat as me or have some of the feelings that I had um, when I was going through some hard times, any struggles whatsoever, I would like be more than happy to talk or um, meet for coffee. <laughs> Everything's better over coffee. But if I can help in any way, that would really be my uh, desire for this whole interview is to help anyone in any way, if anything, um, kind of just felt it in your heart. Terry, how can we get a hold of you then if that's something somebody wants to do? Well, sure. Um, just come on over. Here's my <laughs> number. No, my number is 509-879-1024. And again, 509-879-1024. And what about your social accounts? Do you have any? Yeah, Facebook, Terry Lynn O'Neill. So it's T E R. You probably have it written down maybe on this okay. somewhere. Yeah. Terry with a Y. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's written in the uh, Facebook group. But when this goes out to YouTube and, and on podcasts, People mm -hmm. will need to be able to get a hold of you who um, we, I don't, I won't put your phone number out on those particular things, but in this group, it's fine. It's just, we want to make sure that you have some privacy <laughs> out there <Yeah>. into <laughs> cyberspace. Uh, but anyways, if people want to get a hold of you on Facebook, is it best if they just follow you or ask for a friend request or, or are you here in this group yeah wherever works a friend request is great and maybe tell me how you met met me and then we could become friends and connect that way and awesome. either meet online so yeah well thanks again for sharing your heart with us and because i think that when we show our vulnerability and tell our stories it gives women permission to do the same mm. and when we tell our stories it really does it almost acts as like a therapy session in a lot of ways because we start to release a lot of the tension around mm -hmm. all of that. And I don't know if you watched the last podcast we did with Heather Grover, but uh, just talking about living within your truth and, and who you are is so important, but to not go back in the past and try and live in that uh, space because it's, mm -hmm. it's not who we are today and to learn from it, but then just really take ownership of today and who we're being who we're showing up as. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Jolene, for allowing women to have this platform with you and to be so generous with your time and allow everyone to just be who we are. And that says a lot about you, a lot Aww. about you. So I know you're very much admired. Everyone looks up to you and everyone wants to be your friend and I'm glad to be yours. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. I love what I do. And I'm just thankful for social media to have platforms like this because a lot more women are getting their stories told. And that's an important thing to me. I realized that that was so important when I started writing my online programs and I started having to write out my story and really, um, and even in some Bible study groups I've been a part of where we've had to give our testimonies. And it's until you really go back and start really thinking about it, it, it's just so freeing uh, mm -hmm. to write it out and to speak it. I really felt a lot of release from that, from the past and from some, whatever I was involved with or shame around things, it's, it's mm -hmm. not there anymore. And so I want to get women that platform to do it. Thank you. You do. So.
trust you. Bye, everyone. All right, everybody. See you later. Bye, Terry. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.